Today we're going to power up our Pi and set up the wireless access point. For this to work, you'll need a USB wireless adapter. Now, not all of these are made the same, so I'll show you which one to get. This setup could be done through the terminal of the Pi itself, and that's certainly a valid way of doing things. You'll need to hook it up to an HDMI monitor and plug in a keyboard and mouse. The Pi models 2 and 3 have a full-sized HDMI port. In the Pi model 4, you'll need a micro HDMI adapter. These work just fine. But I'm going to set it up through an SSH connection. This would be useful if you never intend to hook it up to an HDMI monitor or if you would just like a backup. But to see what I'm doing, I'm going to need you to get into the computer first. So just if you'll come a little bit closer and this is just going to hurt a lot. Uh, and I'm really sorry about that, but the headache will wear off soon and the cancer is easily treatable. Come on back to our Pi checklist and let's scroll down to the portion labeled SSH. And we're going to use this SSH connection to get into the Pi if we want a backup or we never intend to set it up with an HDMI monitor to begin with. So we can just click here and I'm just going to type CMD. And that brings up the command prompt. There we go. Very easy. And we're going to remote in with the command SSH. And we're going to type our username, which I changed from the default. You'll need to remember what you plugged in when we flash the card. And the host name. Now, if this is the first time you've set this up with that host name, everything should go as planned. However, I have already set up a terminal titled home before. So what I need to do is open up my file browser Go to the C drive, click Users, click on my username, and then in this folder titled .ssh, I just need to delete this file. Now, I can come on back to the terminal, and I'll just use the Up button to bring up that last command I put, and click Enter, and it should ask for my password. Looks like it wants to make sure I really want to connect. Yes, I am the human and you're the robot. You do what I say. Here we go. And it's going to ask for my password. If you can't get to the password menu, even after troubleshooting this, wait longer. It sometimes takes five or ten minutes for these Pies to boot up for the first time after you plug them in. I'm going to pause this video while I put in my boring password. Okay, we're in. Now, the reason this worked is because when we initially set up the SD card for the Raspberry Pi, we input my Wi-Fi information. Similarly, my laptop is connected to my Wi-Fi, so it's just communicating to the Raspberry Pi through the Wi-Fi router. So the first thing we want to do before any project is we run a command to update all the software. This starts with the word sudo. Sudo is a word that tells the Pi I'm commanding it to do something with the top level privileges. So apt update. Update in this context does not update the software as we would typically think of the word update. It updates the repositories that the Pi is looking at to determine if it needs to upgrade the software, which is our next command. Looks good. Once that's complete, come on back to the Pi checklist and scroll down to where I have a link to the website of the Tech Prepper. Now, the Tech Prepper has a YouTube channel, which you should check out. It's very good. But he was super kind and he put the complete set of instructions that we need to set up our off-grid wireless access point onto his website. He even did the homework to figure out which USB Wi-Fi adapter that we need. And I would normally say, let's show our appreciation to the tech prepper by clicking on some of his affiliate links and buying some things we need. But here's what happens when you click on the one for the Wi-Fi adapter. Youch, $45. I can buy a whole new Pi. <laughs> for that price. And I did buy a couple adapters through his affiliate link back when they were about 20 bucks, but goodness sakes, I don't think I could spend $45 on one of these. Luckily, there's still some eBay sellers that have them in the $20 price range, so maybe not that one, but you can go to his parts list and maybe buy a couple things you need through those links or scroll down to the bottom of his page to the donate button and throw a few dollars his way through his buy me a coffee site. But just go down this list, read the whole thing first, and follow these instructions, and you will be able to set up a off-grid Wi-Fi access point on Pi models 2, 3, and 4 using the Debian Bullseye operating system. So we already did the update and upgrade, but we've got a command here that we need to enter, sudo raspy-config. We could even copy that 
paste it right in. All right, first we're gonna go to display options and click on VNC resolution. You'll need to use your arrow keys on your keyboard for this. And we want 1280 by 720, that's a good one. Click enter, yep. And we want, what's the next one? Is it interface options? There we go. We'll go to interface options. And we already set up the SSH when we flash the card. We'll go to VNC. We want to turn that on. Yes. All right. Now it's enabled. We're going to click finish. It's going to ask us to reboot, but we don't need to reboot now. The rest of this, you're just going to follow his instructions, except for a couple here. We don't need to do this. Already updated and upgraded. We're just going to copy and then paste and then press enter and we'll go through that whole thing. I'm not gonna do this on a video because I want you to go to his website, but there are a couple things I wanna point out. First of all, he mentions here, whenever his code say WLAN zero, you should change it to WLAN one. That is for the Pi three and four because those already have Wi-Fi access on the board and our Wi-Fi USB adapter will become WLAN one. On the Pi 2, everything just stays as WLAN 0 because that is its only internet access. In fact, I should bring this up. If you're setting up a Pi 2 and you don't have a way to plug in a Cat5 cable for internet to download software later, do this last. But on the Pi 3 and 4, we can do this now because we'll still be able to use that onboard internet access to download software. The other thing I want to point out, read this very carefully. If you hit this error, he tells you to unplug the Wi-Fi adapter and then plug it back in. And then down here, I don't think this was explained very well, so I want to hit it. Here's another one of those WLAN zeros. So on the Pi 3 and 4, you'll change that to 1. Here, this is what the Wi-Fi hotspot will be called when you go to connect to it with your phone or computer. So change that to whatever you want it. He has it listed as his FT60R radio. You could change that to home, truck, backpack, purse, whatever. And then here's your password. When you pick a password, it needs to be much, much more complex than this. We'll talk about that in just a second. Afterwards, you'll use the command sudo reboot. And then when it boots back up, it should be outputting a Wi-Fi hotspot that is named exactly whatever you put in this field. Even though our system won't necessarily be internet connected, we should still pick a good stout password for the wireless access point so that somebody who knows what they're doing can't just come along and break it. Take a look at this chart. This tells us how long it takes a hacker to brute force crack our passwords when they consist of various combinations of letters, numbers, and symbols. So if we were lazy and picked numbers only, even a lot of numbers, like 14 of them, it takes a hacker only 41 minutes with current computing technology to crack our password. If we kick up the complexity even a little bit and throw some lowercase letters in there, it now takes that same hacker 51 years to brute force crack our passwords. But if we go another couple steps up and we make a 14 character long password with numbers, upper and lowercase letters, and special characters, it now takes 200 million years for a hacker to brute force crack. You should pick good solid passwords in everything you do, including this. And if you used a simple password, when we initially flash the SD card, you should go back in that sudo raspy dash config dialog and change it. Here's an example of where we will need to change WLAN zero to WLAN one. We're gonna use this command, sudo nano. Nano is a text editor for code. So we're gonna copy this, paste it in here, click enter. Now, there's already a lot of text in here. The instructions on the Tech Prepper website tell us to go to the bottom, give another couple spaces, and we're gonna copy this. It says add the following to the end. Copy, and right click, paste. Now our mouse will not work in this. I can't just click up here. My cursor is still gonna be down here, so I have to use the arrow keys to go up, backspace, click one. This is now done, this one right here. So I click Control X. It asks if I want to modify the buffer. Click yes, and enter. And one last thing I want to mention about this. When you get to this final step, and we get into this nano host APD, 
there's this country code here. If you don't live in the US, you will most likely need to change it. We've also got another WLAN here. There I believe are three total that you need to change to WLAN 1. And then here we've got our SSID, the name of the hotspot, and the password down here. That is how you will change that. When we're all done entering the commands that the tech prepper has for us on his website, we're going to do sudo reboot. The Pi is going to reboot. When we come back, we'll set it up on our VNC connection. You can see the magic happen. While we're waiting for the Pi to reboot, we'll need to download some software so that we can access the desktop of our Pi over a VNC connection through the wireless access point that we just set up. One program that I like is called Real VNC, so just get on your favorite search engine and do a search for Real VNC download. If you think you're going to access through your cell phone or tablet, get on your app store and do a search for Real VNC. It's available on all platforms and it's very easy to set up. You may need to sign in, but the account is free. After a few minutes have passed, we can go over to our list of available connections and see if it's set up and home is now listed on my available connections. That's what I called it when I entered it into the tech preppers instructions. So I'll connect to it. Normally I would need to enter that password that we entered into the tech preppers instructions, but I've already entered it so it knows what to, to connect to. And it's going to behave a little bit differently than an internet connection. By the way, you can see my Yukon and the Volvo out front in the driveway. That's kind of funny. This may even indicate that there's no internet access. Yep, there it is, no internet access. So we're gonna go over here to our VNC software and I'm gonna click File, New Connection. And one thing I don't think the tech prepper thoroughly explained is that you will need to use the IP address 192.168.5.1. We're gonna copy that. This is how the VNC software will know where to find your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to paste that right in. It wants a friendly identifier called Home. I'm going to click OK. That pops up, but doesn't mean that we can connect quite yet. So I'm going to double click that, and it's going to ask me for a username and a password. This is not the same username and password that you set up for the wireless access point. This is what we plugged in when we input the initial configuration instructions for flashing the SD card. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll enter my username and password and then we'll come back and log right in. Remember to click remember password so you don't have to do this whole thing again next time you want to connect. Click OK and here there it is the desktop of our Raspberry Pi. Join me in the next video of the terminal element when we'll configure our desktop and we'll start downloading some software. Oh and I'm going to need you people to get the hell out of my computer now.